二零一五年嘅第九条题目就系讲植物之餐嘅。今次咧，我哋有一棵植物都系淋咗水噶啦，而我哋咧就喺两个唔同嘅时间咧去同佢影张相，朝早九点钟同埋下昼嘅一点钟。咁而家嘅天气又如何啊？我哋喺夏天一个好晒嘅日子入面去影嘅，咁我咁我哋见到两棵植物嘅叶啦，个形态咧都系唔同嘅。Part A 咧就要我哋去描述一下，究竟呢一棵植物喺朝早九点钟嘅时候系点样去维持到呢啲叶嘅外表嘅咧？佢嘅形态点解会系咁样较为挺身嘅咧？相对下昼一点钟啲叶系较为下垂噶嘛，佢就较为挺身一啲嘅。啊，点样去维持嘅咧？成条题目啦，都系考紧呢两样嘢噶啦，就系、是、膨胀度同埋硬度啦，都系提供一个物理性嘅支撑嘅。而今次我哋由于要讲点样去维持呢个外表啊嘛，所以啦，我哋都一定要讲下究竟乜嘢嘅細胞咧系参与喺其中嘅。咁由上个呢 part 咧都系由书本辑出嚟嘅啫。我主要想提嘅系红色间咗呢两个字，就系、是、mainly 主要啊。咁而家啦，呢度都讲紧咧草本植物嘅茎部啦，同埋木本植物嘅茎部嘅。今次咧，我想将整个概念咧去扩张些少，唔好净系讲个茎，仲讲埋块叶嘅。因为一棵植物啦，我哋就唔能够简化晒嘅。哦，草本植物咧，无论系茎啦，定系块叶啦，都净系 only 啊，靠个膨胀度去支撑。嗱，呢个都系错嘅。因为佢主要就系靠膨胀度，因为一棵草本嘅植物咧，其实佢都有木质部噶嘛，咁木质部其实都系有一个加厚咗嘅细胞壁，都能够提供到硬度咧去支撑佢嘅。同样情况啦，一棵木本嘅植物，佢嘅茎啦，佢嘅叶啦，系咪就只系单靠 only 个硬度去支撑咧？都唔系嘅。嗱，木本嘅茎咧，咁可能仲有树皮啊，其他硬嘅細胞啊，仲有好多嘅木质部啊，咁当然主要咧就系靠硬度嘅支撑，但系入面都仲有好多薄壁嘅細胞，佢哋都系靠膨胀度去支撑，所以呢度咧系讲 mainly 就唔系讲 only 呢一个 concept 要搞清先，所以啦 ，X 呢张相咧都应该唔太难理解嘅，膨胀度咧就一定有份噶啦。但系都有啲同学咧系漏咗叶膜嘅，而叶膜咧系有木质部，咁木质部啦就系提供一个硬度嘅支撑，所以答案咧我哋就要提及硬度同埋膨胀度呢两款嘅支撑能力，关乜嘢类型嘅細胞事啊？就系、是、关喺叶膜入面嘅木质部啦，就系、是、提供硬度；块叶嘅叶肉細胞或者一啲薄壁嘅細胞咧，就提供膨胀度去支撑啦。跟住去到 part B 咯，就要我哋去解释一下。喺下昼一点钟嘅时候，点解啲叶系咁嘅样嘅咧？嗱，咁呢条题目咧，考我哋四样嘢做扣连嘅。第一样啦，而家嘅天气系如何啊？环境因素，夏天某一日好鬼晒，仲要晏昼一点钟，究竟个环境因素系点样嘅咧？而呢个环境因素同棵植物嘅蒸腾作用又有咩关系咧？蒸腾作用嘅速度高与低，对棵植物嘅支撑又有啲咩嘅影响咧？而呢棵植物嘅支撑又同佢嘅外表又有啲咩嘅关系呢？咁所以呢条题目咧都系考紧因果嘅个因咧，就系个环境因素，唔使审噶啦。喺夏天好鬼晒，仲要日头猛猛嘅晏昼，一定系高温高光度噶啦。所以蒸腾作用嘅速度咧，唔难理解，一定系好高，所以佢嘅失水咧系非常之多嘅。第二步你要做比较啦。唔單止講失水噶，仲要講埋吸水啦。而家失水失得太犀利啦，吸水速度咧可能追唔上失水嘅速度。咁會有咩情況出現啊？同棵植物嘅支撐，佢嘅外表有咩關係啊？我哋要諗下，究竟有咩細胞參與喺其中啦？就係喺塊葉嘅葉肉細胞，由於過量嘅失水，就會變得軟縮 f r e s h e t 所以个结果就系棵植物嘅叶咧，就唔能够保持一个直立嘅状态，或者我哋形容佢为一个下垂 drop 嘅状态啦。咁黑丝咧就要我哋睇下呢两张相啦。根据翻呢两张相嘅叶嘅外表咧，我哋就判断一下啦，究竟一棵植物喺朝早九点钟定系晏昼一点钟咧，佢系能够进行光合作用咧，系较为有效率一啲嘅，同埋解释下我哋嘅答案。咁喺講之前啊，好多同學即刻會諗㗎。哦，好簡單啊，兩常我知啊，晏晝一點鐘呢，陽光猛烈啲啊嘛，咁棵植物吸得多啲光落，咁咪可以做 photosynthesis 做光合作用做得快啲囉，係咪？呢、這個答案接唔接受呢？還是佢哋真係睇漏咗呢一句，根據塊葉嘅外表呢？所以呢條題目呢，第一樣要考我哋嘅 concept 就係、是、究竟塊葉係點樣擺㗎 x 呢塊葉呢，就係、是、直立位置。
，而 Y 呢块叶咧就系下垂嘅状态。同光合作用有咩关系呢？咁我哋要諗下，喺朝早九点钟同埋晏昼一点钟，有冇一啲环境因素係同光合作用係非常之紧要嘅？咁今次我哋就讲光啦。咁阵间你要知道點解我哋会讲光㗎啦，係咪讲㗎嘛？我哋要睇下块叶嘅外表同佢嘅光合作用有咩关系。既然头先讲光咯，自不然係讲块叶點樣吸光啦，係咪？咁我哋借住呢个机会啦，可以同大家溫下光合作用呢一课，亦都讲一讲成条题目嘅思路啦。所以啦，成個 thinking process 呢，就好似我哋做 essay 咁一款呢，有啲 precaution 嘅，有啲嘢要寫，有啲嘢唔關事就唔好寫。第一啦，就係、是、有關於光合作用有四大訴求，缺一不可。頭兩個原材料、二氧化碳同埋水。第三個所吸收嘅能量係光能。第四個就係植物入面嘅光合作用嘅色素，就係葉綠素。冇咗是但一個都做唔到光合作用㗎啦。而喺呢四個因素入面。究竟边一个因素系同块叶嘅外表有关系呢？所以同学咧又去谂咯。诶，两 Sir， 我谂谂下都系唔系啦。喺晏昼一点钟咧，棵植物咧做个光合作用都系做得唔好嘅。诶，因为咧喺你而家见到块叶系下水啊嘛，咁即系佢失水失得好紧要啦。而棵植物当失水失得咁紧要嘅时候咧，佢会闩埋咗个气孔噶。闩埋咗气孔之后咧，咁咪吸二氧化碳咪吸得少咗咯。啊，咁佢光合作用咪做得差咗咯。哎呀，我啱啦，今次。意思啊，同学仔。你喺呢张相系睇唔到个气孔大细嘅，你呢两张相只系见得到块叶嘅外表嘅啫。所以呢个题目嘅 precaution 就系你要揾得翻一啲可以观察到嘅分别啦。气孔大细睇唔见，但系我哋睇得见嘅系块叶嘅形状同埋佢嘅摆位啊。所以啦，我哋会发现啦，喺 X 嘅呢张相咧，块叶咧系平嘅，系完全展开 fully extend 嘅。咁所以啦 ，X 呢张相咧嘅植物咧就能够做得好啲嘅光合作用。咁但係點解先？因為啦，塊葉係完全展開，所以啦，佢可以成塊葉懟住個太陽去吸光。嗱，好多同學呢都誤會咗嘅，佢會以為呢 X 呢張相嘅植物佢嘅葉呢，佢嘅表面面積呢係比 Y 呢張相嘅植物嘅葉呢係為之大嘅。好明顯呢，又係冇睇題目嘅。你話睇題目幾咁緊要呢？呢兩棵植物係同一棵植物嚟㗎。係只係唔同時間影相㗎咋，所以佢哋嘅表面面積係一模一樣㗎。但系佢哋发叶嘅状态、发叶嘅形状、发叶嘅摆位就好唔同啦。由于啦，而家发叶咧系能够暴露于阳光底下，怼住个光去吸嘅，所以就能够吸多啲光，对于光合作用自不然系有效率好多啦。又嚟到一点出发啦，今次嘅题目咧就系讲植物支撑，当系呢两个概念啦，膨胀程度同埋硬度。先讲下膨胀度啦，咁啊，膨胀度咧系依赖水嘅支撑嚟嘅，所以咧，我哋可以将个概念咧引申去到蒸腾作用。蒸腾作用呢个概念咧，就引申到块叶嘅外表啦。原来失水失得太犀利咧，佢会下垂嘅。啊，同一情况啦，失水失得太犀利咧，个气孔咧就会闩埋咗嘅。咁我哋自不然就要谂下气孔大细同埋蒸腾作用之间有啲咩嘅互动咯。而今次嘅题目再推多一步，就系、是、关个。光合作用事啦，咁你就谂下啦，块叶嘅外表系完全展开啊，定系下垂？而气孔大细咧，就同棵植物嘅气体交换咧，又有关系，从而啦就会导致到光合作用嘅速度有快有慢啦。跟住去到硬度啦，我哋要提嘅就系木质部导管啦，同埋沥连木质素啦。喺度咧想提一提木质部导管嘅，好多同学咧读下读下咧系迷失咗嘅。佢哋會以為咧木質部導管或者韌皮部導管啦，就淨係個徑嗰樹或者一個根嗰樹，就忘記咗塊葉都有。咁你要記得翻啦，只要嗰棵植物係一個維管束嘅植物，即係 vascular plant， 佢哋嘅 s i l o m e s s e l 木質部、f o l o m e s s e l 韌皮部都係貫穿咗根徑葉嘅。植物呢一课咧问亲嘅问题咧都系好直接嘅啫，大家啦想快速温翻书嘅话咧，睇下以前嘅 M C 啦，或者之前嘅呢一条长题目咧都得嘅。One five question nine is about the plant support. These two photographs shows the appearance of the leaves of a well watered pot plant at 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. on a sunny day in summer. Imagine the temperature, the light intensity of the environment. And for part A. It asks us to briefly describe how the appearance of the leaves shown in the photograph X is maintained. Clearly, we need to recall the concepts: turgidity, 
and rigidity for the mechanical support in the leaves. We also need to specify the type of cells related to the mechanical support in the leaves. So this part is the concept about the turgidity and rigidity. And the key words I would like to mention is the red highlighted word mainly. Because some students, they just oversimplify the concept. They think that all the herbs, their stem, their leaves, their roots, they are only supported by the turgidity of the fin wall cell. And it is wrong. It's mainly because in the herbs or in the non-woody plants, there are still some thick wall cell, such as the xylem vessels. They can provide the turgidity for support. The same idea for the woody plants. Don't just think that they are only supported by the rigidity. They are just mainly supported by the rigidity because, because in the woody stem or even in the leaves of the woody plant, they contain some fin wall cell. And for the fin wall cell, they absorb water to provide the turgidity. So that's why for a plant, no matter it's herbs or non-woody plant or woody plants, they need these two types of support. Surely, most of you can recall the turgidity of the fin wall cell in the leaves. However, some students are not aware that the presence of the xylem vessel in the network of the vein running through the leaf surface. Therefore, we need to mention both of them, rigidity and turgidity. But what are the cells involved? So we need to recall the xylem vessels in the vein. So we need to recall the vascular bundles or the xylem vessel running through the network of the vein in the leaves. And for the turgidity, we need to recall the mesophyll cells or the fin wall cell in the leaves. And for part B, we need to suggest an explanation for the appearance of the leaves at 1 p.m. That means in the photograph line. So for this part, there are four concepts we need to recall. We need to realize the environmental factor on a sunny day in summer at 1 p.m. Very sunny, very hot, that means the temperature, the light intensity, they should be very high. And then we need to relate the environmental factors to the rate of transpiration. And recall the effect of transpiration on the support of the leaves. And finally, we need to relate the support of the leaves to the appearance of the leaves. So you can see the thinking logics step by step. So it's a very useful way for us to think about the answer. For the scaffolding, we need to recall the cause and the effect. So for the cause, that's the environmental factor. As well, I mentioned high temperature and high light intensity. So what's for? We need to determine the rate of transpiration at 1 p.m. A large amount of water is lost from the leaves by transpiration due to the high temperature and high light intensity. After we talk about the rate of transpiration, we need to do the comparison between the rate of water uptake and the rate of water loss. In this case, we know that the appearance, the leaves, they are dropped. They are not that upright. So it means that the rate of water uptake cannot keep up with the rate of water loss. Therefore, the mesophyll cells in the leaves, they lose water. They lose a lot of water and become flaccid. Because they are flaccid, they are a bit soft, they cannot support the leaves to maintain the upright position. That's the appearance of the leaf. Or we can say that the leaves become dropped. And for part C, with reference to the appearance of the leaves in these two photographs, which one is more effective for the photosynthesis and explain your answer. Some students, they may directly think about that. Oh, I know it, Mr. Leung. At 1 p.m., the light intensity and the temperature is very high. The plants can carry out photosynthesis effectively. Is it the real case? Or we really need to take a look at the appearance of the leaf first. So first, we need to mention the appearance of the leaf in photograph X and Y. Photograph X, the leaves, they are in the upright position. And in the photograph Y and the leaf, they are dropped. Then we need to recall the key factor related to the photosynthesis. In this case, it is the light intensity. I will explain why later on. Then we need to relate the appearance of the leaf to the light absorption of the photosynthesis. And I would like to grab this chance to recall the concept of photosynthesis. And how can we relate the concept to this question? Meanwhile, I would like to grab this chance to talk about the whole thinking process. It's just like the precautions in the essay type question. What thing we need to mention and what thing is irrelevant to this question. So we need to recall the essential factors for the photosynthesis. The raw materials, carbon dioxide and water. And the energy capture is the light energy. 
and the subcellular photosynthetic pigment is the chlorophyll. And then we need to pick up the suitable factor related to the appearance of the leaves. Because some students, they think that, oh, I know it, Mr. Leung, 1 p.m. and I can see that the leaves are dropped. And when the plants, they experience a huge water loss, they will close the stomata. And once the size of the stomata becomes smaller, so they cannot absorb much carbon dioxide for the photosynthesis. So that's why they cannot carry out the photosynthesis effectively. Am I correct? No, 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 because with reference to the appearance of the leaves in the two photograph, can you see the size of stomata? You cannot. You just can observe the shape and the orientation of the leaves by the appearance of the leaves. So you never observe the stomata in this case. Therefore, we can only talk about the shape and the orientation of the leaf. The leaves, they are flat and fully extend in photograph X. Therefore, the exposed surface can be oriented towards the light source. In this case, I would like to talk about that. Some students, they misunderstand that the leaves in the photograph X have a larger surface area than that in the photograph Y. However, we use the same plant, but we just take picture at different time. So that's why both of them, they have the same surface area. What we can talk about is the shape or the orientation. Because the leaves, they are oriented towards the light source, so we can maximize the light absorption for the plant to carry out photosynthesis effectively. So let's talk about the curriculum mapping. So for this question, it starts from the plant's support. Surely, we need to talk about the turgidity and rigidity. So let's talk about the turgidity first, because it is water-dependent support, so we can relate the concept to the transpiration. And for the transpiration, we can talk about the appearance of the leaves in the plant and also the size of the stomata. And when the plant is experiencing a large water loss, so what will be the appearance of the leaves? And what will be the size of the stomata? And in this question, it extends the concept to photosynthesis. Therefore, we need to relate the appearance of the leaves to the light absorption. In this question, although we cannot see the size of the stomata, it plays a key role for the photosynthesis. Once the plant it loses a lot of water, the size of the stomata will become smaller, and the gas exchange efficiency will become lower, because the plant cannot absorb carbon dioxide effectively for photosynthesis. And for the rigidity, Surely, we need to talk about the nickelin and the xylem vessels. And for the xylem vessel and the vascular bundles, including the phloem vessel as well. So some students, they misunderstand that the xylem vessel, phloem vessel, only appear in the stem or the root, but they also appear in the leaves. So that's why in the vascular plants, all the xylem vessel and phloem vessel, they are in the root, stem, and leaves. So for the plant support, if you would like to learn more, you can take a look at the MC and the long question.